Good afternoon, everyone. Flood, fires, quakes, South Africa, unusual snowfalls. It was snowing in summer, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. You got record floods happening across the planet. Do you think it's because of this planetary squaring? Nobody wants to talk about that's upsetting the apple cart on our planet. Let's take a look at it. But remember, during this time, you're going to be responsible for your own food production. We've got ducks, chickens, and dogs. Yep, you're going to have to have it all. Because I'm going to pose the question to everybody. This is what we're looking at in October, where the Earth is behind the Sun, squeezed in with this squaring of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. And perhaps this would affect electromagnetic fields on our planet or even disturb jet streams and rainfall patterns because if you flip that over and look at it from the wider view that sun is actually where the earth is on the back side of the sun and we're going to get this formation here an arrowhead perhaps but october 2024 left 79 a.d right this is about as an exact of a match as you can get over a 2000 year period so you would ask yourself with something like this coming back that hasn't been seen in a couple of thousand years, would it be significant enough to disrupt our present way of life? Because we've seen the images before. This is in Bangladesh. These massive storms come in, all these cows. That was farm fields somewhere back in there that is completely underwater. you got waves pulling in, massive wind action. Floods through the city. It still hasn't drained out completely. And here's the main thing. When you're looking over the agricultural area, literally where all of the food is grown, it looks like this. So this is almost a near wipeout in Bangladeshi food production for the year. And, you know, why would I say that? Well, jumping over to Thailand, they're seeing the most massive floods. And it's starting to now move its way down to Bangkok. But everywhere along every river... Center of country, east of country is looking like this. Again, what's the similarity where they are growing rice and other foodstuffs is now underwater. Like Sukhothai in the central area, they're losing roads. It's just nightmarish at best for Thailand food production. And those are just two examples of hundreds of loss of food, but that seems to be a similarity. Everywhere we're growing food is either in an extreme drought or flooded beyond all recognition. Now, the war front over in Ukraine, that's one thing to take off production. But when we look across the planet, country after country after country after country after continent is just downgrading their output of anything edible, especially the grains, the fruits, the legumes like beans. It's going to be far less food produced this year coming up into the harvest season and prices will adjust accordingly. JP Morgan and Citigroup now forecast two supersized Fed cuts this year. The stock market crashed in 2000 and 2007 after the first rate cut. In 2007, gold went up over 200%, more than doubling. Silver tripling. Because gold is security in times of uncertainty. And Patriot Gold Group has an OP for Life IRA where your IRA or 401k could be in physical gold or silver. No fee for life IRA on qualifying rollovers. Give them a call, 888-546-7020. And now on with the video. Because I'd say a lot of people are not. And just a perfect example here. I had a reporter on this last week. The 5X amount of rainfall forecast coming in for northern africa and the sahel yeah that's five times more rain than the average over not just a country but the northern part of africa and then you'll see the temperatures dipping with that so when you get down to those very light purples you're looking at 16 celsius or so below the normal and that's probably around 23 24 fahrenheit under the normal so that difference in cloud cover look how much it dropped the temperature now how much extra food could you produce in that area if it maintained more steady cloud cover versus being baking desert all the time is the question. Now we start to see a lot of political chess pieces moving because of these same shifts that we're witnessing here. 
So the sudden stratospheric warming event in Antarctica had knocked a whole bunch of cold out of the center over Antarctica and started it spinning around the southern hemisphere. And you could just see these, what was almost like, Propellers of a plane just going in a circle in a loop and they would hit each continent in a different time. So Australia and South Africa both, I would encourage you to look at the devastation across Australia with these incredible winds, incredible winds, snowfall, record cold temperatures. And here, South Africa, because I did the story on this, I'll bring you Australia in another day or so. This got up into Lesotho, Swaziland, KwaZulu-Natal area really cold below the normal and you can see some of these temperatures anywhere there's a minus that means below freezing zero is 32 fahrenheit or zero celsius but anything with a negative mark on it brings us down into hard freeze and that is going into springtime so it should not be hard freezing right now and media has called this rare and unusual so we got drakensberg mountains here Africa snow, check out the snow report. I'll link to everything below so you can follow these. But what a stunning picture of Table Mountain. Can you believe such a thing? Wow. Coming into springtime as well. And you look, not just a dusting, but that's a long and very tremendously wide snow line there. From Cape Town way past Durban. Unusual even to see it at the depths of winter with this much snowfall. And again, off the snow report, the breaking news, they're putting this everywhere, people are throwing in the videos. Oh, and they had a meteorite explode over South Africa with fragments and ground shock as well. This is another thing. Meteors, meteorites pounding our planet at, you know, levels not seen on the largeness in quite some time. Unusual snows, ferocious winds, and then the images keep pouring in. You know, it's such a beautiful place anyway. I love traveling to South Africa. Excellent, just mind-bending experience with nature, the people, the history, the ancient history, the coastline, everything it was just such a magnificently beautiful destination to go to. Now mind you, I traveled there in what, 1994, but the beauty still remains and these types of snow is one thing, but check out Cape Town. Highest rainfall ever recorded for parts of the Western Cape in July. Look at that. That's not even a little bit above a record break. This is multiple X above. And that's why we have to start changing all these charts all over the place when we're looking at past events. That is a gargantuan increase. But remember also, save the trees. Remember when we wanted to save the trees to save the planet? Save the trees, tree huggers, people living in the trees, save the sequoias, etc., 2020s, we don't need no stinking trees because we absolutely have to give the goats and the sheep a place to stay dry. You wouldn't want them walking on the mud. Those poor little sheep, they got to walk in the grass and the mud and stuff. No, 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 no. You need to give them a place so they can walk above that. You would not want to have animals with their hooves in the mud and grass. That's a no-no in today's world. And as I was diving through the craziness, this is from the last week of August. Daily record lows broken across West Virginia. But the new record lows are not substantially lower, except maybe Parkersburg. Six degrees cooler than the 1940 record, which brought me to a few slides I'd forgotten to post a video on. They just got stuck in the back of a file. Now, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, there was snow July 15th. Philadelphia International Airport recorded record snowfall in July. There's been trace snows before. And they call it hail from thunderstorms. Counts as the snowfall. I'm like, wait, every time that's, there's a hailstorm, you're going to call it snowfall? That doesn't make sense. But anyway, we'll stay with it. There's been a, a spackling of these events through time, but the record obviously broken. And I, I, when I couldn't believe it, so I said, all right, I got to take a look. This Pen Pennsylvania... Pax weather. As thunderstorms passed over the airport, it produced small hail, but it was so small it was called snow. Trace snow. So somehow they obfuscated here that it wasn't hail, but it was so small micro crystals of ice, they called it snow instead of hail, but they're trying to term it as hail because it was from a thunderstorm. So you, yeah, you should be confused too. And I was there, everybody's pushing Las Vegas, man, 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Whoa, you're, you're, Eyeballs are going to melt out of your head. Record snowfall in Philly, but I didn't hear about that until I really started 
digging in. And that snowfall record in Philadelphia in the middle of July 2024 broke the record back to 1870. I thought there's got to be a lot more news on this. Is there? Sure enough, you know, you start hitting the search engines and it is indeed valid. Weather service, National Weather Service, local, local TV, airport, all picked it up. And the oddities continue. And as we get into this October 2024 event, this is going to amplify. So for me, it's more of a marker in time of amplification that then spins the rest of the world to try to either cover it up or put more control in over it. So when the event happens, there's still some control apparatus in place. There's a method to the madness was explained to me. And I was like, why don't you just tell everybody? And they're like, you can't do that. But it would... The world will fall apart if they were told in advance. So you're just going to kind of dribble through it. And the reason that you would know it's in play is because you're going to see more things in the, the world around you completely go off the rails. But that is the effect of what we're seeing and what would be observed by the observer that might get freaked out. Wouldn't want to have that happen. So the number one thing you're going to need to think about is your food production. Supply chains are going to get very disrupted during this time, especially if there's an economic event that is somehow related to crop failures and energy price increases or non-availability of energy for whatever reason it would be. You're going to have to take food under your own hood again. You're going to really have to start taking accountability for that and start thinking of plans with yourself, with your families, with your neighbors, neighborhoods, communities, whatever it is. That's the number one thing that keeps getting destroyed or reduced is the amount of food being produced country by country. Now with that known and already how high our food prices have gone before and we just basic on a napkin here, it's going to get really strange through the rest of the year here into the beginning of next year before it might taper off somewhere after April. But during then and now, if your food price doubles again, most people are going to have a very difficult time. You're going to have to think about what can you do indoor? What can you trade? What could you grow? What, how can you convert a room into a, a growing room where you could keep the temperature up and keep those microgreens going or something like this? You know, it's going to be a Rubik's Cube of ideas to, you know, walk through. What can you store now? There's a huge amount of stuff coming in locally because of harvest season. Now, what can you get there? Dehydrate it, freeze it, can it. Then you can store it so you have it later on in the year. And it's much cheaper prices right now because, like I say, it's harvest season. And if you're looking for more ideas, check out Marjorie Wildcraft's webinar here off the Grow Network. You can go to Homegrown 2030, teach you how to do raised beds, how to get on with some protein raising, some homesteading skills with chickens, that sort of thing. Totally free. Check it out. I do appreciate you watching. Hope you got something out of the video. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.